Coming up on First News at 9, folks are working around the clock to clear the mess left by Mother Nature. Also, a Texas woman was in for a surprise when she found a connection to Bismarck. And later, how the blanket of snow might help one North Dakota industry. First News at 9 starts right now. Good evening, I'm Erica Craven. Thanks so much for tuning in to First News at 9. With the weather outside, we thought it'd be best to take our first look at the forecast. So Henry, is there a light at the end of the tunnel? There is. We've already got some improving conditions across Montana and western North and South Dakota. Notice not all of us are covered in red, but where you are in red, mainly east of Highway 83, you remain under a blizzard warning until midnight. A few counties in South Dakota still a winter weather advisory, but the worst weather, the James River Valley, and especially east of Bismarck and along Highway 52, which remains closed from Minot to Jamestown, but we're still dealing with blizzard conditions uh, for residents in Botano County, McHenry, Kidder County, parts of Burley County on southward and eastward. But luckily conditions are going to be gradually improving acro across the eastern and central region as we go into the overnight hours. They wrap around moisture moving south and east instead of west, so that Colorado low is pushing out of here as high pressure pushes in. That's causing things to settle down across the west and that is making it feel so much better but you'll notice visibility down to less than two miles across Harvey into Carlsruhe rugby the Turtle Mountains on eastward even Bismarck down to three mile visibility with a bit of snow left over into the Red River Valley so for that reason DOT is still not recommending travel for much of central and eastern North Dakota um, with the highway 52 being closed um, from my not to uh, Jamestown, Erica, um, is not open yet, so it'll likely remain closed overnight. So we'll discuss more about that later on and the frigid weather that's underway. Okay, thank you. Many people have been working behind the scenes to dig North Dakota out from under the snow, and public works staff say it's been a challenge this storm. Reporter Maya Fleck has the details from the last four days. The weather this week has been a testament to everyone's endurance, especially those clearing the roads. These cots used by snowplow operators to sleep at work in between shifts show the fortitude of public works who are working during this week's storm. Several people uh, that are staying over per shift, uh, most of us that are staying overnight are in rural Bismarck, Mandan area and a couple from Lincoln. So we just choose that it's probably best that we stay here so we don't take a chance of getting stuck on the road somewhere. So They are planning to work 12 hour days until Christmas and their team is made up of around 14 people per shift. But during this snowstorm, they have 16 workers in addition to part time employees and Sanders. Yeah, early this morning, we were pretty close to being um, at least a pass through all residential areas. Um, I think there's a few areas left in the Promontory Point area that they're still working on, which they should get through that this afternoon. After they cover certain areas, they will recover all the emergency routes. The biggest challenge is the snow, you know, the snow gate's not holding the snow back. There's so much snow there that we're that it's it's getting in driveways and it's 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 gonna happen and we're we're doing the best we can to keep a driveway passable. Generous people have donated snacks and treats to keep them going during the day, like Shields and Bravera Bank. In Bismarck, I'm Maya Fleck reporting for your news leader. Public Works asks the residents to help the plow operators by parking cars away from the streets and blowing snow away from plowed roads. They ask folks to be patient as they start widening the streets again soon. There are more than 4,000 hydrants in the city of Bismarck. Many can be hard to reach due to snow. The city is asking for help clearing snow from around the hydrants by adopting one. It helps reduce the time for firefighters to get water for a fire. And crews at the airports have been busy as well. Here's footage from earlier this week of crews with the 5th Civil Engineer Squadron working to plow snow off the Minot Air Force Base runway. The squadron, known as the War Bulls, is split into two teams, one to clear the base, the other to clear the airfield. They say it's important to be prepared. In the uh, times that we're in, um, that nuclear deterrence is, is very important. Um, and at any given time, we could be called upon to um, have those B-52s uh, head down the runway and, and go out for a mission. 
He says they have a team of roughly 60 warbles that cover 6,500 acres of property. Minas Runways is one of the largest in the Air Force to plow. An $858 billion defense bill passed by the U.S. Senate last night has important provisions for Minot Air Force Base as well. Among other projects, the bill provides $3.6 billion for ground-based strategic deterrent modernization. $735 million would go towards replacing engines and radars for B-52s. And $39 million would improve communications equipment at the Nuclear Command at Minot Air Force Base. I included a provision that requires Air Force to give us a schedule as to when we'll get a new weapons generation facility that serves both the bomber wing and the missile wing. It emphasizes uh, probably our highest priority and that's nuclear modernization programs and it, it really protects our strategic deterrent to keep pace with our adversaries, especially with China and Russia. The bill now goes to the president's desk. President Biden participated in a town hall today to tout a newly passed bill that expands benefits for millions of veterans. Fox News correspondent Madeline Rivera is in Washington with more. First Lieutenant, young guy, 102 years old, Ray. President Biden kicking off his remarks in Delaware with a recognition of a local World War II veteran. My wife, she said, Joe, don't get emotional. Not that I ever get emotional. At a National Guard facility in Newcastle named after his late son, Major Joseph R. Bo Biden III, President Biden spoke about the benefits of the PACT Act. The legislation passed by Congress in the summer expands benefits and services for veterans exposed to toxins including from burn pits, a crude method of trash disposal. The president blames Bo's death from cancer on toxic burn pit exposure while he was serving overseas. The best trained, fittest warriors in the world and came home with headaches, numbness, dizziness, cancer. Since the bill was signed into law, the Biden administration says more than 185,000 veterans have applied for PACT Act-related benefits. The administration and the Department of Veterans Affairs are hoping to drive those numbers even higher, hosting about 100 events nationwide to spread awareness about the law. If you're not enrolled, get enrolled. A monumental effort served with a mountain of gratitude during the holidays for the sacrifices these veterans made. Finally, Congress did the right thing. The VA has sped up its timeline and is already processing PACT Act related claims for terminally ill veterans. In Washington, Mather Rivera, Fox News. Another state has taken a stand against TikTok. Montana Governor Greg Gianforte announced that the use of the popular app will be banned on state devices starting today. In a memo, Gianforte cited TikTok's practice of harvesting data from its users' devices and offering information to the Chinese Communist Party. He says the app poses a significant risk to state security. North Dakota and South Dakota's governors have made, also made the same decision. A district court judge set bond at $1 million for a man accused of murdering a woman. Prosecutors say 34-year-old Jacob Long killed 30-year-old Megan Lindquist at their home in the Buford area Wednesday. Authorities had been trying to track Long down for more than 24 hours when they found him in a home they say he broke into. United States Attorney General Matt Merrick Garland is challenging the st sentencing guidelines for people convicted of crimes involving crack cocaine and making it more in line with convictions for powder cocaine. Garland sent out a memo to federal prosecutors Friday. He says the disparities between the two drugs is not supported by science and has led to harsher sentences for people of color. The new policy will become effective in 30 days, a win for civil rights advocates. A state hospital superintendent, Dr. Rosalie Etherington, has resigned. She shared that she'll pursue new endeavors and dedicate more time to her family. Dr. Edwater Yabat has been named interim superintendent until a new one is appointed. Coming up, the story of long-lost siblings and how they found each other. Henry? And it looks like that blizzard warning, now it, we're no longer under blizzard warnings anymore. That just happened a second ago, but visibility is still poor across the James River Valley. We'll talk more about your weather after the break. This is West Dakota Fox News at 9. 
Finding long-lost relatives is more common now that DNA testing is commercially available. Rona Quimby Huckabee was adopted by a family in Texas when she was only six days old. She recently submitted her DNA to 23andMe for analysis, thinking she was just looking to get information into any hereditary conditions she might be predisposed to. But what she discovered was that she had a half-brother right here in Bismarck, North Dakota. It was quite uh, a shock to realize that I'm a big sister. I've had, I've had uncles and I've had parents. I mean, I know all those relationships, but this was a new, a new avenue for me. Rona and her half-brother Jake met up in Texas last summer, and this is her first Christmas as a sibling. They plan on celebrating together in Las Vegas in January. Something else that might be becoming more common, reports of UFOs. The Pentagon provided an update today. Pentagon officials say they have received several hundred more unidentified object reports to examine since they established an office to look into them. Officials say most are likely not considered dangerous. Well, from up in the space to down in our skies, Henry, what more can you tell us? Uh, not nearly as much snow falling as there once was, but still across parts of South Central and eastern parts of the viewing area, we still have some blowing snow and poor visibility. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the roads first. At three o'clock um, today, um, the um, DOT opened Interstate 94 in both directions. That is still the case. The only thing is that Highway 52 is still closed between Minot and Jamestown and will likely remain closed overnight. But with the way things are going right now, um, it should be open tomorrow. Good news, no more blizzard warnings in effect. We had a few um, in effect uh, at the top of the hour, but the National Weather Service has canceled all blizzard warnings, which is good news for the region. Still winter weather advisories for parts of South Dakota and the Red River Valley until midnight. But you'll notice we still have the um, snow, wraparound moisture, and a bit of blowing snow with reduced visibility. Bismarck again, some light snow showers still, as we see on our Skywatch camera. But for now, um, Bismarck, south of town and east, still getting the snow. Minot, Williston, Dickinson, Sydney, everyone west of Highway 83 are mostly looking better right now, but still poor visibility is being seen across the eastern region. But as high pressure pushes in, the weather is settling down. That's why we had sunshine for sunset across Minot down into Dickinson, Wilson, Montana for today. So that felt great with a clear sky. Arctic air plunges in with that Arctic high pressure. So morning lows are gonna be sub-zero in the single digits, but notice they don't rise very much for tomorrow afternoon. Highs are only going to be in the single digits above zero, maybe a few teens above zero for parts of um, south, far southwestern North Dakota, heading here into Bowman, Marmoth, and Baker. But this is just the tip of the iceberg because it's going to get even colder than that, believe it or not. Want to talk a little bit about the snow shower activity. A weak little disturbance for Montana and parts of far western and southwestern um, North Dakota for tomorrow evening. That pushes eastward into the central region as we go into your Sunday with very light snow expected, not a major storm. Lots of Sky Spy videos and photos submitted today. This photo taken in Watford City by the Hinton family. The snow causing, uh, creating, I should say, a nice winter wonderland. Speaking of which, large, long icicles. Thank you, Sarah and Halliday for your picture. Uh, farmers in Richardson got everyone under control. The cows are looking good. The Grinch saving Christmas in Beach, North Dakota, getting up a lot of that snow in South Mandan. Looking at this picture from our very own Jaden Hertz with six to seven feet snow drifts. The evergreen tree in this picture by Carol and Bismarck, 30 plus feet tall. And check out that snow drift, just about half as tall as the tree. Now, a little bit of good news. This is that sunset that we saw in Minot for today. So that was great news. Um, snow totals have been anywhere from um, as little as a foot to as much as 22 inches of snow accumulated over the past three to four days. But look at that snow possible for Sunday and then highs remaining below zero for much of the next work week. But yeah, believe it or not, winter does officially begin Wednesday. Winter is here. Yeah, it's, it's already it's been, been here. here. Yeah, pretty much. All right, coming up, North Dakota Outdoors captured on film. More after the break. Your latest. 
The North Dakota Outdoors calendar is always popular with outdoors men and women at this time of the year. In this week's segment of North Dakota Outdoors, Mike Anderson gives us a preview of the 2023 calendar. The North Dakota Game and Fish Department has produced and printed an outdoors calendar for nearly 40 years. What's attractive about it is quality photos, top-notch photographers, um, shows North Dakota's pretty side. Um, cool animals, uh, and the calendar also features application dates for deer, pronghorn, the big three, others, um, and season opening dates. Wilson said this year they tried a different approach and reached out to people through social media, which generated close to 90 different photographers submitting images. Along those same lines, if you look at the calendar, of course you got 12 months, so you got 12 spaces to fill. And in the past, when it was difficult to find images, um, you'd feature uh, photographers, say, more than once. And this year we have nine different photographers in the calendar, which is cool. Ron Wilson and Game and Fish Department photographer Ashley Peterson sorted through all the photos after the contest deadline. So we wade through those, and it, it you know, becomes apparent very quickly you know, what would work in the calendar. We just start separating them out. I want them to be as close as we can to the month and, and what's being represented outside these walls at that time. After sorting through all the images submitted, the judging process starts. I know what I like, and but I want to know what other people like too. There were four people from, from the Game Fish. Then we went through and, you know, hey, what do you like? Will this one work? Why won't it work? Um, so there were a lot of opinions and, and I think we made good choices. This year's cover photo is of a bighorn sheep displaying mating rituals. We've run bighorn sheep photos before in the magazine, in the calendar, but this one was kind of unique because you can tell it was during the rut, during the mating season. This is Mike Anderson in the North Dakota Outdoors. To view or order a 2023 North Dakota Outdoors calendar, visit gf.nd.gov. The storm may provide good photo opportunities and possibly draw at the athletes or tourists. Some say the snow is perfect for many outdoor activities like downhill skiing, cross-country skiing, or sledding. One area expecting to see a benefit is Huff Hills. Yeah, we're always excited to see, you know, normal winter weather come. It, it helps everybody get excited about winter sports and, and it, it reminds them that there's a lot of things to do in North Dakota outside of you know, our traditional summer activities. Huff Hills will be updating its Facebook page with the status of its openings. They will be monitoring conditions, but are hopeful they will have fresh snow for Sunday. Coming up, stuck at home but never bored, these North Dakotans show us what they're getting up to while they're snowed in. Closed captioning, sponsored by Wrestler Site. We wanted to know, how are you staying busy while stuck at home? Our anchor and reporter, Jody Kurzman, asked her Facebook followers to share photos, and your responses were something else. In fact, we think it's good news. Those who can seem to be staying home, Jody shows us how many are staying busy and keeping cabin fever from getting the best of them. Get it, William. <laughs> Being stuck at home is beginning to take a toll on some. Many kids haven't been to in-person school since Tuesday. Since. And while virtual since. learning has kept some busy, since. many have found other ways to entertain themselves during this winter weather. Hudson and Keaton Hintz headed outside, made a giant snowman, and taste tested some icicles. Their mom confesses she's almost finished her third book of the week. This one looks so beautiful. Molly Schultz's list for her busy kids includes very painting, a very beautiful unicorn when we're done, a bounce house in the garage, and baking cookies. Move it around, I'm use those muscles. Here. It seems many of us have dusted off our cookbooks and aprons and spent these snow days baking up a storm of our own. We made sugar cookies. We haven't decorated them yet. We made Grinch cookies and we made pretzel bark. Not to mention the gingerbread houses and fancy breakfasts. Some of you have to work from home but others have turned to crafts, board games, and puzzles. And then there's the snow that needs to be moved. 
Thank you for all that you do. Eight-year-old Cam Dever is staying busy writing letters to the custodians at her school. Thank you for shoveling the sidewalk so we won't slip. The overall theme, we've got this. North Dakotans are tough. And even in the longest, snowiest days, we seem to find ways to stay busy and stay smiling. In Bismarck, I'm Jody Kurzman, reporting for your news leader. You can see all the responses on Jody's Facebook page, Jody Kurzman KFYR TV. Maybe you'll even find an idea you want to try. Well, Henry, baking, crafting, or yeah. playing outside? Yeah, well, I, I think I'll go with baking. <laughs> oh, I go I'm with outside. Right <laughs> outside, yeah, we, we all want to get outside, especially on the roads, but that's likely not going to happen until tomorrow. We got to tell you, it's going to be frigid, not just the weekend, but all of next work week. Notice these are highs. We're expecting highs only in the single digits and teens below zero next week. So for tomorrow, single digits, maybe a few teens across the Southwest, but it gets really frigid next week. So we're out of the winter storm and into an Arctic blast. All right, thank you. And thanks for watching. Have a great night.